there's one home for all of your animations. Here under the Interactions tab, you can trigger animations to occur on Entrance, Hover, Click, Scroll, and Loop. Once you create an interaction, you'll see a lightning indication next to all the elements involved. So in this lesson, we'll cover how to add each type of interaction to your page, plus how to create a custom animation of your own. First up, let's create an entrance animation. When you choose to trigger an animation on entrance, your elements will animate when they first enter into view. So to add one, we'll just choose the element we want to animate, click the entrance trigger, and choose from the presets. Each of these presets has a quick GIF that shows you how the animation will behave. And once you add one, you'll have this indication here that this element is now animated. Then you can adjust it a bit, like choosing the direction of your animation, and you can preview it right from the inspector. When you're happy with it, you can see that the interaction is indicated in the inspector. You can also see that your interaction cascades down through the breakpoints. But if you want, you can change the animation at different breakpoints. You can change the direction or duration of the reveal at different breakpoints, or choose a whole different interaction. So if we choose Fade in the tablet view, you can still keep it set to Reveal on desktop. Or you could also set it to None on mobile, and you'll still see the image fade in tablet and reveal in desktop. In the same way we triggered an animation on entrance, let's trigger one on hover. Let's see how it's done on a container with text and a CTA button. If you want to change the color of the container on hover, first you need to start by selecting the container, then in the Interactions tab, choose Hover, then click Add. By default, your animated element will be the same one that you chose as your trigger element, in this case, the container. There are different animation presets you can choose from here. Choose the color option, then adjust it and change it to a different color. Then we can preview that interaction right from the inspector panel. When we go back to interactions, we'll see that new change is defined. We can preview the site and test if the animation plays on hover and goes back to its initial state when we move our cursor away. Now let's try making this button spin. We'll choose the container again, and in Interactions, go back to Hover and click Add. For the animated element, go to Choose on Canvas to select a different element. Then choose the button and pick Rotate. Then, let's adjust the animation by changing the angle to 360 degrees, so it spins all the way around. Now back in Interactions, you can see the new interaction is defined. Again, preview the site and test how it looks on Hover. Click Interactions work really similarly to Hover Interactions. So let's create this effect where our images will move in different directions on the first click, and then when you click again, they'll go back to their original positions. Start by choosing the container that your images are in. Then under Interactions, add a click interaction. We'll choose the left image as our animated element, since that's what we want animated when it's triggered. Then click the Move animation. We want this image to move left and up, so let's adjust the animation and change the angle to 300 degrees and set the distance and the duration of the movement. Then when we go back to Interactions, we'll see that the move is defined. Let's repeat these steps on the rest of the images and set a different angle for each according to the move we want to create. We can also change the default to a toggle behavior so that it'll automatically move on first click and move back on second click. And let's preview the site again to see how that looks. With the scroll trigger, you can animate elements as they scroll through the page. Let's create a scroll interaction on the container. Start by changing the animation path to From Its Design. We want the container to shrink while we're scrolling the page, so let's choose the Shrink preset. Click Adjust Animation and scroll to see the changes right on our canvas. Then let's make some adjustments to the Scale and Animation Area slider. 
The Animation Area slider allows you to define where the element will be in the viewport when the animation starts and ends. Right now, it's set to start at 50% and end at 100%. That means the animation begins as soon as the element enters the viewport at 50% and ends when it reaches 100%. In our example, the section is set as sticky. That means that the end of the viewport acts as the end of the page, so the container will shrink until it reaches the bottom of the page. We can make it start a little earlier and keep it at 100%. And here, scale determines the size of an element once it reaches the end of the animation. Let's preview it again. Repeat that step on the other two sections below, then preview it again. And you can also add a scroll effect to your global header by heading over to the inspector and going down to scroll effects. Loop animations play infinitely, and they add a really dynamic bit of movement to your site. So let's add some to our page. There are a lot of presets here, but we're going to choose the breathe preset. We can make some adjustments, like changing the direction, increasing the speed and the distance, or setting a delay between loops. And with easing, you can change how the animation eases in and out, which can help you to make your animation a bit more nuanced. Let's cover how you can create a custom interaction. Right here on Hover, I want this card to show each name one after the other. The card and the image are children of the same container. So we can just apply the animation on the parent container. So let's select the parent and add a custom effect. Here we have more options to adjust the animation, where you can choose to edit the initial state before the hover or the animation state after the hover. In the initial state, we don't want the card and the name to show. So let's select the elements and change their opacity to 0%. If we go back to the animation state, you can see the elements have been added to the timeline window. You can adjust the start and end times and the easing for each element in your animation separately with these fields. We want the card to show first, then the name, so we'll add a different start time for each. Unlike presets, with a custom animation, we can control the timeline of the elements and create unique interactions by combining multiple behaviors all at once. Preview the animation from here. In the Studio Editor, you'll only see the pre-hover state, but in Preview, you'll see the whole animation. Over our last two lessons, you learned how to use the sticky and pin position types, and how to use different animations on your elements. Now you're ready to put it all together in our next challenge. I'll meet you there.